Hello everyone, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and welcome to Meteorology Part 5, Energy in the Earth's Atmosphere. In this video, we'll talk about how energy gets into the Earth's atmosphere, but to start off with, let's do a quick review for how energy is transferred from one place to another. There are three basic ways to transfer energy. We'll start off by taking a look at radiation. Here's my powerful handheld laser. By shining it on a match, you can see with no contact, the match will burst into flame. Energy through light is transferred across space to cause the match to catch fire. Another way to transfer energy is through the process of conduction. Here we can see conduction at work. I'll use the propane torch to heat up one end of this copper strip. Notice the thermometer pointing at the left-hand edge. As I warm up the strip, the atoms begin to move faster. They transfer their energy to the atoms beside them and so on until the atoms on the left-hand side start to increase in their motion or increase in temperature. And finally, a way to transfer energy in a liquid or a gas, let's look at convection. It's easier to see convection in water, so let's take a look at this water tank. On the left side, there is a black can and an intense light shining on the can. On the right side are several ice cubes. I've added some food coloring to help the visualization. On the left side, the intense light is radiating energy onto the dark colored can which absorbs it. As the atoms absorb the energy, the atoms start to move faster. As they move faster, they expand or increase in volume. Increasing volume means lower density, which causes the red water to float. On the right hand side, at the ice, the atoms are moving slower because it's cooler. As the atoms move slower and contract, they increase their density, causing them to sink and establishing a convection cycle. It's really all about density and gravity. Warm substances are less dense, so they float. Cold substances are more dense, so they sink. Now that we understand how energy is transferred from one place to another, Let's go back and take a look at this in respect to the Earth's atmosphere. Specifically, let's start with radiation. Radiation is just another word for light. If we take white light and pass some of that light through a triangular shaped piece of glass or a prism, the white light is actually made up of all the different colors. But there's more to light than what meets the eye. If we take a look at this diagram, we can see that there's far more than visible light. On the left side of the diagram, beyond red, there's infrared and microwave and radio radiation. On the right hand side, past the purple, is ultraviolet and x-rays and gamma rays. Light is far more than the few colors that we can see with our eyes. Visible light and white light are one of the same. Another thing that's important to understand is different colors are simply different wavelengths of that electromagnetic radiation. So as we start talking about color, let's talk about the age-old question, why is the sky blue? The light that the sun gives off, remember, is all the different colors. Since we have a lot of oxygen and nitrogen in our atmosphere, it turns out those atoms do a good job of scattering blue light. Occasionally you say, wait a minute, sometimes I remember seeing the sun red, such as this picture on the family farm in Illinois. Well, not only pictures from the ground, but pictures that NASA astronauts have taken from space indicate something similar. The particulate matter that tends to be closer to the surface of the Earth often does a good job of scattering red and orange light. This is why sunsets are often red or orange. We also now know with the spacecrafts that are driving around Mars, 
Mars's atmosphere is often an orangey gray. This is due to the high concentration of particulate matter in Mars's atmosphere. Let's talk about the reflection and absorption of light. The term albedo refers to the percentage of light reflected from an object. This is something I'm sure you're all familiar with when you get dressed in the morning. If it's a hot sunny day in the summertime, I hope you choose your clothes wisely. Notice the temperature of my white t-shirt in this picture and compare that with a few minutes later when I put on the black one. The shirt on the left has a high albedo. It reflects a lot of the light that is hitting it. The shirt on the right is not reflecting a lot of the light. In fact, it takes the light and absorbs it. When that light energy is absorbed, it's turned into heat energy. So, the similar thing happens with the Earth. The sun heats the Earth through the process of radiation being absorbed by the land surface. Let's talk about the albedo of the Earth. 30% of the light hitting the Earth is reflected off to space. 70% is absorbed. Being more specific, of the 70% that's absorbed, 50% is absorbed by the surface of the Earth, the land and the ocean. Now, we discussed this earlier when we talked about seasons. Imagine a certain amount of light hitting the equator and the same amount of light hitting at the higher latitudes and poles. The light hitting towards the equator will be far more concentrated and much more spread out in the higher latitudes and the poles. So we'll see that the time of day and latitude make a big difference in how much solar energy is absorbed. That leaves 20% unaccounted for. Well, it turns out the Earth's atmosphere seems to be pretty clear. Light shines through it quite well. But there is this missing 20%. This is where it's important to keep in mind that light is far more than the colors red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Remember, there is ultraviolet beyond the purple. The ultraviolet light from the sun often hits the ozone in the high stratosphere. Ozone molecules are fairly opaque to ultraviolet light. They absorb the ultraviolet light and turn that into heat energy. That's why it's warmer in the upper stratosphere. Similarly, closer to the surface of the Earth, molecules like carbon dioxide, also water vapor and methane, do a good job of absorbing the infrared light that comes from the sun. These gases are often referred to as the greenhouse gases. Molecules like carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane absorb this infrared light from the sun. That is not the same way that a greenhouse warms. A greenhouse has a glass covering that inhibits convection. In this case, these molecules of gas actually directly absorb light from the sun. This is causing the Earth's atmosphere to warm. So in conclusion, although some light is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, most of the sunlight strikes the surface of the Earth. So the sun heats the Earth, and in turn, the Earth's surface heats the air. In our next video, we'll take a look at how this energy then is transported around in our atmosphere.